Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We'll be looking at games releasing from the dates of the 19th of March up until the 25th and there are at least a couple of games here that I would imagine would be on a fair few people's wish lists. So which games are coming out for the Switch this week? Well, let's find out. The first game we'll look at then releasing this week is called A Place for the Unwilling. This is a branching narrative adventure set in the final 21 days of a dying city. It says that every decision you make will shape your surroundings, down to the people you speak to, the jobs you carry out and how much of a role you play in the city's hierarchy. It goes on to say that the story is set in a Dickensian world but with a splash of Lovecraft and it definitely has a macabre look to the hand-drawn art style judging by the trailer. It will cost £13.49 but you can get 20% off of that price up until the 29th of March. We then have Kraken Academy, where you will need to team up with a magical Kraken and save the world all on your first day of school. There is a traitor within the school and you will play out a time loop each time, learning the routines of teachers and students alike to help you get closer to solving the mystery. The blurb goes on to say that there are four clubs that can be joined, music, art, sports and drama, each with their own plot points. It sounds equal part confusing and incredibly interesting to be fair, and the publishers have taken the wise decision, I would say, to put a demo on the eShop so you can try before you buy. It will cost £15.99 or your regional equivalent, but there is 20% off of that price up until the 4th of April. Wait, now I have to help a Kraken save the world? And why is everything on fire? Uh, are those alligators eating children? <laughs> I'm sure it'll on the 23rd you have the release of Tempest 4000 via Atari. Now the original Tempest is a classic game which started life, so I've read, as a perceived first person remake of Space Invaders. After this proved difficult the idea was changed to the third person claw shaped ship moving between lanes and destroying the enemies that approach you from below. Tempest 4000 was developed by Jeff Minter, who also created Tempest 2000, which was widely considered to be one of the best games to grace the Atari Jaguar. That system certainly is a blast from the past, isn't it? I remember the controversy about it when it released as to whether it was actually 64 bits in power or not. I bought Tempest 4000 for the PS4 a couple of years ago, I got the physical version for very cheap, about £4, and I must admit I've always found playing Tempest difficult with a stick, I just can't seem to be accurate enough and overshoot the lane I'm aiming for. I think the original arcade had a paddle control, although I could be wrong there, I never played it in arcades I must say. It will cost £16 or your regional equivalent. Also this week is Andro Dunos 2, which comes some 30 years after the original Andro Dunos game. Like its predecessor, this is a horizontal shoot 'em up, and that first game released in arcades and for the Neo Geo back in 1992. I read an interview with the developers of this game a while back, I will link to it in the description if I can find it again, and they said they wanted to create a modern game that felt straight out of the 90s. It also said that the game is getting a physical release for the 3DS amongst other systems coming via Pixel Heart, and I believe I also read that it was the last 3DS game approved before Nintendo ceased production of the cartridges. It will sell for £17.99 and it releases on the 24th. Next then we have Airy Calm Mind 2, which is the latest in a long line of Airy titles to come to the Switch. These are flying simulation games which generally focus on experiential gameplay and providing a zen-like atmosphere. According to the blurb, this version features a collection of some of the best sceneries from the Airy franchise so far and you will be collecting crystals as you glide through each of the stages. It's going to cost £9.99 and it is also out on the 24th.
One here that I'm sure will be on many people's radar and that is Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This sees Kirby enter a new world where civilization and nature become one and you'll be using Kirby's familiar actions such as inhaling or copying to move around the 3D environments. You are out to save the Waddle Dees that have been captured by enemies called the Beast Pack and you'll be taking these on while solving environmental puzzles and challenges to get to the end of each stage. You can play in two player and use a Joy-Con each and there is a demo on the eShop if you want to give it a try before committing to a purchase. I've been a big fan of the Kirby games ever since Kirby's Dream Land released on the Game Boy many years ago now and most of his adventures have been in 2D of course, including one already on the Switch. It will be interesting to see how he fares in full 3D. Then we have Devastator, which is an arcade-style twin-stick shooter. It appears to be an arena-based shooter in the vein of the classic Robotron, and it has that modern, stylized take on vector graphics with higher action, frantic gameplay as you take out waves of enemies. You need to take on 15 different types of viruses across three modes, quadrants, sectors, and cycles, and the modes will change the wave pattern of the enemies and the length of time you will need to survive. These sort of games can be great fun when done right and it certainly does have that modern retro aesthetic. It will cost £6.99 or your regional equivalent. Next is Bouncy Boy in Puzzle Land which is a tile based puzzle game. Now the blurb doesn't explain very much at all in terms of the gameplay but judging by the trailer I'm assuming that you need to either get the titular Bouncy Boy to an exit or you need to colour every tile in with his slime. Either way though I do quite like tile based games such as this and the aesthetic is definitely very appealing in my opinion. It will cost £10.95 which in terms of the production values perhaps looks fair but it would need to have a good amount of content for that price as there are many similar albeit perhaps not as flashy looking games in this genre for much cheaper. Anyway we'll find out what it's all about next week when it releases on the 25th. Another of next week's games is Taco Ban. This is a cheap puzzle platformer from Retalika Games where you play as one of two pandas trying to organise their boxes efficiently to gain the maximum bamboo they can have. This basically equates to sliding the crates around with particular gimmicks being added as levels go on and you'll need to complete levels in as few goes as possible. The blurb mentions that there are over 50 levels with 12 of these being specifically made for local co-op and it will cost you £4.99. And finally for the week then, also out on the 25th, is Rune Factory 5. Now I know some people have been eagerly awaiting the arrival of this new entry in the farming slash monster battling series for a long time, and having released in Japan last year, the wait is now nearly over for the West. This sees you as a new recruit in the peacekeeping organisation called Seed, and after the customary bout of amnesia used in these game stories, you are stationed in the small town of Rigbath, where you will oversee the upkeep of a farm, fulfill requests from locals, and battle or tame monsters in what is essentially a RPG combat. You'll have the opportunity to compete in cooking, crafting, and fishing contests, and as far as I can remember, this is the first game in the Rune Factory series to move into full 3D environments. I know I had one on the Wii, I think it was called Frontier, which was 3D to a point, but this features full 3D settings to explore. It will sell for £49.99 or your regional equivalent, and we will have a review of this one out for you next week. Ever the day may bring. I can learn a lot from someone like you. So there you have it, another week of Nintendo Switch releases, a couple of big ones in there, as well as a few other interesting looking titles. Please do let us know if you are picking any of these up, which ones, if so, stick it all in the comments section below. Don't forget, if you do want to get yourself some eShop credit, you can do it via our website, switchup.gg. We have managed to secure 10% off of the price of cards for this month, so you've got until the end of March if you want to save yourself a little bit, and of course it helps out the channel at the same time, which is very much appreciated. 
A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.